Am I the butthole for telling my parents they only have one daughter and she is six feet in the ground? This all started when I was 12 years old and my younger sister was 10. Let's call her Abby. Well, Abby started to get sick and no one in the family knew what was going on. I started to be dropped off at my grandparents as they went to different doctors. I'm not going to go into her illness but when the doctors figured it out it was bad. So a lot of time was devoted to my sister. When I was 14 it got worse and I started to be left at my grandparents for longer amounts of time. It started with just staying the weekend and then maybe the whole week. I would bring it up and they told me that they have to focus on Abby. Soon I was staying there for months. By the time I was 16 I was basically living there full time. I would maybe see them every other month. If it texted them about the whole thing the same response was always sent, we need to focus on Abby right now. I'm 19 now and Abby has passed away from her illness. Her funeral was two weeks ago and I attended through FaceTime. I got a call today from my parents and they wanted to meet up and be a family again. I told them that they abandoned one child for another. I am not their child anymore. That they only have one daughter and she is six feet under the ground now. I soon hung up I've been getting texts calling me an ass and that I should understand that they needed to focus on Abby and to suck it up basically. So am I the butthole? NTA. Was it harsh? Yes. Was it deserved? Also, yes. While I can sympathize with dealing with a terminally ill child, they still had another child that needed their love and attention to. A child that was losing her little sister, probably scared, and lonely and then effing abandoned for seven years. Yes, Abby needed them. But you did too and they failed you miserably. And they failed Abby too, who might have enjoyed a relationship with her sister in the few years she did have to live. And they failed Abby too, who might have enjoyed a relationship with her sister in the few years she did have to live. This is what I keep coming back to. It's unconscionably cruel to keep two siblings from spending time with each other while one is dying. I cannot imagine dying and not being able to have my sister around. This honestly brings tears to me. Edit. Thank you for the hug, black heart. I mean I can't really relate my sister yells at me a lot but generally yeah it's horrible to keep two siblings apart when one is terminally ill especially for 7 years. This would apply to those with a good sibling relationship and nothing in the post indicates they didn't like each other, but they started staying away from each other pretty young and chances are they were robbed of the opportunity to bond and original poster might have started resenting Abby because her parents solely focused on the terminally ill child, such resentment is common in these situations, through no one's fault but the parents who couldn't divide their time. Hard for them too, but they have more than one child and they ought to take responsibility. I don't understand the responses saying they wouldn't already have bonded by 10 and 12. What? It highly depends on other factors. My mum told me as a kid my brother doted on me and followed me everywhere. Unfortunately from 12 years old onwards depression hit me like a truck and let's be honest, I wasn't a nice teenager. Now, I have next to no memory of my childhood and my mum is prone to exaggeration so I don't know exactly what happened but either way, my brother and I are no longer close at all. It all changed that year. I'm in my 30s now and we still barely contact each other. I can understand original poster experiencing that to some extent due to the nature of what happened. That bond they may have had can dissipate fast in the circumstances and it's really sad. I don't know if that helps at all. Even under normal circumstances things can change as you approach adulthood. I have four younger siblings and the ones I am closest to as an adult are not the ones I was closest to as a child. Things sometimes change as your personality and their personalities develop. When you're under the same roof, things tend to get tense. You don't always like each other. But assuming it's not abusive and super horrible, because siblings can abuse each other, you tend to realize after moving out you have a bit of a love and fondness. They're comfortable, like an old well-used blanket. Ain't this the truth? I effing hated my brother so much growing up and I'm 100%, sure he hated me too. We used to get into extreme verbal and physical fights on a daily basis. I don't know anyone who hated their sibling as much as me and my brother hated each other. Now that we're in our 20s, we love each other to death hang out multiple times a week and share the same friend group, person shrugging, fair skin, female sign. Some people are just not compatible with living together at all. You can have a great relationship with family especially after moving out. I find that with my mum. 
Distance is the key sometimes. This. My sister and I fought so often and so violently our mum literally tied us together once out of sheer desperation, like in the movies. The day I moved out, we spent half an hour sobbing like babies, clinging to each other on the front steps. Our relationship's been great ever since. One of the main reasons I haven't committed the big sleep is because my sister would definitely do it too and I don't want that for her or my parents. Folded hands, thank you for staying on earth for and with your sister. Please don't go. I appreciate that. I tried it once and it didn't work, luckily. I actually earned a professional license in the field I want to enter but I made it through a fourth round interview that could help me pay off my loans and fund a further education for my preferred job. Your reason for not taking the big sleep is the same as mine my friend. And look at you now. I'm super proud of you. I'm really proud of you guys, man. I hope you two experience further blessings down the road. Your reason is the same as mine was. It was bad for a long time. But it changed. So much better. Lots of reasons to stay now. A job I love, a wonderful partner and two amazing kids, fabulous friends, great family. I for one am very glad you are here. Almost every time I was super close, my younger brother needed something. I could have been on the side of the road and had called me with a question. It was ridiculous laughing my butt off but I always told myself I can't go when he needs me. Now I'm better and get to see him grow up. If this was a novel, it would turn out that he had psychic powers he wasn't allowed to tell anyone about, so he just did what he could to save you with all these chance calls. I'm really glad your brother is potentially psychic. I'm glad that the times I've come close I haven't gone through with it, because my older sister has a 21 month old daughter, and even though they live on the other side of the world I want to be as present as I can. Honestly I wouldn't even be surprised he's an amazing kid and this would just be icing on the cake. I'm glad you're here too. Sometimes we find people to be here for till we can do it on our own. I hope when this pandemic better under control you can see them again. I'm the sister to a brother who did do it. I promise, you don't ever want your family to go through this. I saw a post like this years ago, and it was a picture of a younger sister clutching her older sister. The caption was that the older one had come back from the hospital from an attempt and the younger one wouldn't let her go. Burn that into my soul. Hit me too. Had to be very painful and scary. Me too. I'm stuck on this. Focusing on one child like will catch up with original poster once Abby passes on. But what if, God forbid, original poster had an accident and passed on suddenly whilst they were still focusing on Abby? What then? I feel for you original poster and admire you for being brave enough to bring it up, and whilst things are still fresh. I'm sorry for the loss of Abby and for what seems to be a rocky relationship with your parents going forward. Especially since Abby was sick for years, it boggles my mind that these parents thought they could abandon their daughter and have her on the sideline waiting for her sister to pass. I can't imagine if my little brother became terminally ill and I wasn't able to be around him. It honestly would break me. At least in her post, original poster didn't express any interest in such a relationship. Perhaps her sister didn't either. Her sister was 10 when they started separating them for roughly 7 years she spent same amount of time growing with her sister as growing apart from her, shouldn't be surprising that original poster didn't seem overly attached. I haven't seen my brother in a longer time than I've ever spent physically around him and it would still hurt to not be there for him when he passes. Ada, not the butthole. She does in the comments. Didn't even get to see her sister before she died. I'd be well pissed off, too. I'd be devastated if I lost my brother without that chance to say goodbye. I appreciate the parents must have been devastated themselves by the diagnosis but I can't imagine how they came to the decision to separate them. How heartbreaking for up. Exactly. I have two daughters and I legit can't wrap my head around essentially abandoning one to tend to the other. Especially if the younger one with a sick child. She would most definitely still want to have at least some sense of normalcy in life which includes her sister, fighting and all. NTA. Your parents failed you majorly in a time you also greatly needed their love and support. I'm so sorry you had to go through this through some of the most important developmental years in a person's life. What's really doing my head in is seven years. Seven effing years. Living with a terminally ill family member for that long? 
It's a horrible way to say it, but it becomes routine. They completely and utterly did not need to focus on Abby. I can see something like this happening over a year, maybe? But seven? Away with this bullcrap. When my sister had cancer I spent more time at the hospital than either of my parents. Even before she died my parents didn't just abandon their other five kids, there is no excuse. NTA. Seven years is horrendous. I'm sorry ah. Uh. NTA. It is not harsh in respect to how the parents treated original poster for five years. This covers everything, I think. Op's parents failed both of their daughters in separating them. I get being overwhelmed by one child being sick and dying, but this was possibly the worst way they could have handled this. This. All this. NTA, Op. NTA is a parent who had a terminally ill child, I made sure that my other kids still knew that I loved them and even organized people to sit with my child in hospital while I spent quality time with my other kids. It's hard being a parent knowing that your child is going to die, but you don't ever push away your other kids. I'm so 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 sorry that you were abandoned by your parents and I'm sending you huge hugs and love right now. You have every right to be angry at them and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise as none of them were in your shoes. Take time to grieve for your sister and your lost relationship and most importantly please be kind to yourself you do matter. Edit thank you all for my awards. Take time to grieve for your sister and your lost relationship and most importantly please be kind to yourself you do matter. This is good advice. Hugs to you op, I'm sorry for all you have lost. Yeah, goodness original poster is savage as hell but the parents deserve that. They not only abandoned original poster but also deprived both children's sisterly relationship. Original poster didn't get to see her sister before she died, how is that isn't cruel? The parents deserve every bit of it, but op, your anger is part of your grief, and a very normal part. I mean, this past year was likely due to COVID, but the six years prior, yeah. COVID or not I doubt 2020 was the year op's butthole parents would have decided to see their daughter again. I am so very sorry for your loss. Yay, I can kind of relate to original poster not a good look. There was a phase from 2016 to 2018 where my brother was always sick. Stomach ulcers, vomiting, couldn't eat anything etc. They had to spend a lot of time on him but they still came back for us often. Was one of the scariest experiences I've had because I was constantly thinking of what could happen? NTA. While having a seriously ill child is challenging and will often take priority, it doesn't give your parents license to simply send their other child away and stop parenting them. They abandoned you and now that your sister has passed away they want to rug sweep their behavior and play happy family. It's completely understandable that you do not want to have a relationship with them. Therapy may be beneficial for you to process losing your entire immediate family. They need to respect your boundaries. Sorry for your loss and good luck. They're treating her like a book they left on the nightstand. Now, seven years later they want to pick it up and go, alright, where did I leave off? You can't do that with people. It's also so callous of their relationship with Abby. They were so all concerned with her that they needed to abandon their other child, but a week or so after her death it's just home, I swore we had a replacement one around here. We'll just put that one in and go back to normal. There are two parents, between them they had the resources to share parenting duties for both kids and they chose not to. There was no need it was a choice an original poster isn't their backup child they can boot up when they are ready to parent again. Also. Did they just push Abby's sister out of her comfort circle with no warning? I would imagine a terminally sick teenager would want her teenage sister to visit her and do sister stuff with her, even just watching trash TV and talking. So the end of her life was probably just her parents and nurses and no one her age. Both sisters sound so lonely. I mean, you can't even do that with a book, you'd really need to start over, just like they'd need to start over in building a relationship with the daughter. And a daughter definitely has more feelings than a book. Just to be clear, it's totally up to original poster if she wants any relationship with them, but they'd, at a bare minimum, need to acknowledge that they're starting over and that she's basically a stranger. They are worse than strangers. With complete strangers you don't have years of baggage to unpack. They're more like ex-family members by divorce. This. Perfect analogy. 
I used to say toy on the shelf. You can't just turn the batteries back on now you want to play. Damn on point and well said. Exactly. And original poster is an adult now. They missed out on the entirety of Op's remaining childhood, denied both original poster and her sister any opportunity to bond or have some normalcy in the few years they had left together. Her parents acted like their children were both just for them rather than being whole people in their own rights. Op made multiple attempts over the years to reach out and made it clear she didn't like being separated from family, and was rebuffed. Op's words were harsh, but clearly spoken from a place of grief. And her desire to separate from the posters that abandoned them is entirely valid. If she chooses to try again in the future that's also valid, but I can entirely understand how she feels. This. There is a difference between top priority and only priority. Unfortunately Op's sister fell into the latter. I understand if their actions were limited to the first few slash several months of her sister's diagnosis as they might need to get their heads around things but they're responsible for two daughters not just the terminally ill one. FYI NTA. NTA and I have to wonder what's Op's grandparents thought about this whole arrangement. I hope they provided a loving home. This was my thought. Sending original poster away while they took some time to adjust, as much as you ever could to such a thing. Even to occasionally give her breaks and the grandparents over the years where she could be the sole focus. However, they stole Op's sister from her, and vice versa, and cut her off from themselves as if she wasn't in the equation at all. She lived with her sister for 10 years and I'm assuming had some sort of relationship that both girls would have benefited from. You don't just get to call her up then and be like okay 19 year old daughter, we're ready to be mom and dad again. Like you often hear about parents treating a sick or disabled child differently to the others, beyond what is expected or necessary, and the other kids being resentful but literally sending her somewhere else to live. No, not even that really. They didn't even bother to decide to send her away, they just kept leaving her there. It's this latter point that really makes the parents guilty of high assholeism, sweep it all under the rug and pretend none of it happened and they were loving parents. Sickening. Op is definitely NTA. Agreed. I would be more understanding of them if they tried to become a happy family again if this went on for a few months but seven years? Nope not the butthole 100%. Ah yes the I'll pause my other child till later and expect things to remain exactly the same attitude. Something tells me Op's parents don't understand how life or parenting works. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.